Hello Internet, I'm your One Nightmare, also known as Jacob Waterman. The quick news is, obviously I haven't done a vlog in about a year. I plan on picking it up and you'll be getting vlogs about once a month. The first thing I want to mention is that you're probably wondering, oh Jake, what are you going to be doing with your gameplay? Well, right now I'm currently at another channel, which you can find right here. Um, I'll also leave a link in the description, that way you can go check that out. Uh, I've been working with a friend of mine named Connor, we've been doing gaming pretty much like that. Also, on top of that, I'm going to be working on a D&D 5th Edition podcast. Uh, at some point, I will announce it when I have a website up and running for it, and we actually start posting things. Follow me on Twitter, and you will get updates. Now, on to Pokemon. My history of playing Pokemon has been around the turn of the millennium. I was playing Blue version as a kid, which, I mean, I was only about 8 years old. And I also started to collect the cards. Which I still have to this day. Then around the time that Gold and Silver got released, it was given to me as a gift, and I played both Gold and Silver, because at some point I acquired Gold. And once Crystal came out, I sort of dropped Pokemon altogether. And until about a month ago, uh, my girlfriend let me borrow Pokemon X, which I had only originally had a DS so I could play Monster Hunter and Professor Layton. And this resulted in me immediately going back to some of my old completionist ways of trying to literally catch them all, which I should mention is actually pretty impossible. Then almost immediately picking up X, Pokemon's 20th birthday came around, and the announcement of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon came out, which by the way I have already pre-ordered. Now, normally I'd condemn a game for being so similar over all these years, However, I actually kind of have to give Pokemon some credit as it's doing something I wasn't quite expecting. Now, I realize that these games are generally targeted towards, you know, kids, and that's fair. But at the same time, it's also kind of targeted towards my age group as well, as I discovered there is competitive Pokemon. How, how do you even compete in Pokemon? I mean, people had to cheat to get perfect statted Pokemon and stuff. What? Now, one reason that I actually can't condemn Pokemon for being so repetitive and nearly timeless is the fact that I am noticing kids today who are enjoying the same game that I got to play when I was a kid. When I was roughly their age. Yeah, there's only about 600 new Pokemon, but you know, who's counting? I think that's one of the charms of Pokemon is that it's kind of like a timeless classic that just gets a little bit of a refresher. There's more Pokemon, yes, but at the same time they introduce new mechanics. Like, did you know that TMs, you know, you can use multiple times now? What? That was unheard of when I was playing. Also, it really goes to show how long it's been since I played Pokemon or any handheld game when I asked my girlfriend if she needed a link cable to trade Pokemon. Yeah, I really should have realized that uh, you don't need those anymore. Everything is wireless. Not even the fact that it's gotten a little bit refreshed, but I mean, they've even picked up actual storytelling techniques. I mean, with Pokemon Blue, there really wasn't much to the story. You got a Pokedex and a Pokemon from a professor, and he told you to complete it and to be the best trainer you can be, even though I don't think he actually said that. Yeah, there was actually, as far as I was aware, no incentive to beat the Elite Four. And you had a rival, who was kind of a dick, but when you look at some of the, like, backstory and really weird fan theories. Pokemon was really dark. Even the stories themselves have matured. Pokemon X has basically got a world-saving catastrophe where it doesn't really seem like anybody's the bad guy except the bad guy is trying to be the good guy, but it gets complicated and these are games for kids! I mean, but that's just one thing about it is that it's not the same story that I grew up with. And the other thing that I absolutely love about Pokemon is that it encourages exploration and companionship. I mean, Pokemon X even had a very interesting concept of, you know, catching them all isn't really all there is to this game. Your friends in this game, one of them wants to complete the Pokedex, one of them wants to be the best dance Pokemon trainer, one of them wants to be the master of Mega Evolutions, which I didn't even know were a thing. Apparently that was introduced in Pokemon X and is a fairly new thing, which, yeah, still confuses me a bit, but I can do it. And then there's your friend who just wants to have good memories, which, I mean, to be fair, lots of my Pokemon memories were just me going around and catching everything that I could under the sun. But the other thing that I think has been amazing for Pokemon has been the internet itself. I mean, 
Wonder Training? That is brilliant as much as I fucking hate getting Whirlpools every fucking time. But then every now and then you get something amazing like a shiny Lugia who's holding a Master Ball. By the way, I'd like to thank the person who sent me that, whoever you are. You made Wonder Trading amazing. I'm sorry that I sent you only a ditto, but in large part the internet has brought some amazing features for, you know, allowing random strangers to help you. O power is an amazing thing, I mean, just randomly some passerby can decide to help you make your capture rate go up, or could potentially screw you by increasing your encounter, which has not happened to me, however I have used it to try to catch Pokemon, like Politoed. But on top of the completionist part of me that decided to pick this game up and want to literally catch them all again, I have found that I've restrained myself significantly. Now, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, I am extremely excited for, even though I know nothing about them. I don't even know what the starter is. All I know is that I'm gonna go with the fire type. Pokemon has really brought out the companionship that really comes along with this game and really proves like you have to befriend Pokemon more to make some of them evolve. I'm looking at you, Golbat. I had to pamper you to get you to turn into a Crobat. And you know what? still have. But that's the amazing thing about Pokemon is that, as I said earlier, it's something that little kids today are playing that I played when I was a kid. I have seen things on the internet already of a little girl asking her dad, well, do you know what Pokemon is, dad? And he pulls out his Pokemon cards and starts showing them to her. That just goes to show how universal this game is and how much it means to so many people. Even if you don't play it, it has had an impact on, you know, a lot of things to collective card games, mostly collective card games. But Pokemon has had a formula and it's stick to it, more or less introducing little things. Picking it up, I knew what a super rod did. I didn't know where to get it, but the internet told me. Thank you, internet. You are the savior of me. But it even goes beyond that. It bridges the gap between hardcore gamers and casual gamers, which I'm still in debate about using those terms because I don't really think there's much of a difference. Like when a Pokemon game decides that when you breed Pokemon with all perfect stats that five of them will cross over and one of them will be randomized versus people had to cheat before to get perf near perfect stats. But that just goes to show you how hardcore this game can get that a small change like that was noticed by the overall community. And then there's catch rates and wandering around in the same bush for six hours trying to catch Pokemon. But I think to wrap this all up, I've got to say that I'm looking forward to Pokemon Sun and Moon. There's plenty of information out there. Also, because I know it was a little bit harder for me to find, and I will post it in the description, but this year you can get all the legendaries, well, not all the legendaries, but like the mythic Pokemon that are being released by Nintendo and GameStop. I'm not being promoted by either of these, by the way. I'm just putting this information out there so people in the description below you will see all the Pokemon that are getting released, which months, and the dates available, and where to get them. Most of them through Mystery Gift. Which, by the way, I'm still confused about Mystery Gift, but that's not the point. Anyway, thank you for watching, and make sure to join me next month.